Okay, so now I'd like to show you the and give you an overview of the Linux terminal. The terminal is a place where you can basically do anything you want on the operating system and run any program you want on the operating system by running the commands that are associated with the actions that you want to do. The Linux terminal is very powerful and it basically allows you to do so much more than the graphical interface. A lot of the programs that we're going to use have graphical interfaces, but the command line is just so much easier, so much quicker. Also, in many scenarios that you'll face in the future, you might just get an SSH or a command prompt on the target computer. Therefore, you need to know the commands in order to be able to do whatever you want it to do on a computer or to pen test its security. So learning the command prompt, learning how to deal with the com command prompt is very important. We're going to be using it a lot through the classes. So for now, I'm just going to give you a very simple overview. And as we use it, I'll be talking about more of the features. It's just going to become so much easier for you. You're going to love it. It's going to be so much easier than running through the graphical interfaces. So it's, it's using it is very simple. You literally type in the command and the result is displayed on screen as text. So let's have a look on a very, very simple command. The command is called ls. And what this command does, it lists all the files and directories that exist in the current working directory. So it's, it's similar to the dir command in Windows machines, literally just lists all the files and directories that exist in the current directory. And as we can see, the files and directories that we have now are desktop documents, downloads, music, whatever. Now, before I just go more into detail of other commands, one of the very important commands that's going to become so handy to you in the future is the man command, M-A-N, and it stands for manual. The man command can be used to query and get the manual of any other command. For example, we just used the ls command to list all the directories that exist in the current working directory. Now, let's do man and then type in ls after that. This will show us the manual for the ls command. And as you can see that it's telling us that the ls is used to list contents because it lists files and directories. And then we can see that this command actually takes options. So it takes more options that were than just the ls command. And you can see the format of the options in Linux. It's either a minus letter abbreviation or minus minus and you type in the full option, which is all for example in here. And then right here we can see that what this option does. So for example, the all option, it does not ignore entities and starting with the dot. So let's, if you type in on enter, the manual will just keep going down so you can read more stuff. And as you can see that these are all the options that you can do with the command. You can see, for example, here, the minus L uses long listing format. So let's quit this. To quit this, you just type in Q and we're out. So we're out of the manual for the LS and let's run LS with some options. So I'm going to do LS and then I'm going to do minus L and that's the one that will show us more information about the files. So it's basically the same command that we ran before, but as you can see now we got more information. We've seen the total entities that exist in the current working directory. We can see the same directories that we've seen before right here, but we can also see the dates that they were created or modified. We can see the user who is responsible for them and it's the root user. And we can also see the permissions on these. Now we're going to talk on permissions in the future as well. Basically permissions specify which users can do what. So they go in into read, write, execute, read, write, execute. You don't really need to worry about them now. We'll talk about them more in the future. And this is just an example of the ls command. Now all of these commands are not hacking commands, they're not penetration testing commands, they're just commands used in Linux that allow us to do different things on the operating system. Now you can do penetration testing commands and we're going to do them in the future and they're literally just running programs on the operating system. 
Another really useful option is the minus minus help. So I'm going to do ls again and do a minus minus help. Now the man and the minus minus help work on almost every command. So you can do man ls or ls minus minus help and it will also always show you help or the manual page of the program. So right here we can see this is the help page of using the ls and it tells you all the options again of the ls command. So again, it's a minus or minus minus and then you put the option name like we did before and on top it shows you information about what the command does and it gives you the format of the command. So it should be used in this particular format, usage ls and then you put the options and then if you want to do anything to a file. So it's very similar to the man command. Sometimes some uh, programs will not have the man so they'll just have the help. So if you have any command, if you have any program that you're not sure on how to use, you can always just type in man, the name of the command or uh, the name of the command minus minus help. Another useful thing with dealing with terminal, you can press the up and down arrows to go through the history of the command. So as you can see, I'm switching between the commands that I run. I run man ls, I run lsl, I run ls minus minus help. So I can switch between the commands through the up and down. Another useful thing is the tab, the tab button on the keyboard. So if you're typing a command or if you're looking for a file and you're just not sure, for example, let's say I want to type a file name. Let's first make a file. So I'm just going to go to places, home, because we're right now we're in this particular place and I'm going to create a new, let's create a new folder. So let's say I'm looking to do something with test. So I'm looking to go into the test. So the CD command can be used to go to change the working directory to go to another directory. And let's say I want to go into test. So if I just type in TE and I'm lazy, so I'm just going to type in tab at right now. And as you can see, it automatically finished the directory because there is no other directory that starts with TE and it's just going to take me to the test. And as you can see now I am in test. So another useful command right here is pwd and that shows you the current working directory and as you can see now I'm in root test. Now if I want to go back I can just do cd again change directory and instead of typing a directory name that I want to go to I'm just going to type in dot dot and that will just bring me back to where I was which is in root. So I went back from root test to just root. Another useful command is clear. Just clears everything. And everything is gone now from screen. Now these were just very, very basic commands. Now there is so many commands on Linux. I'm going to post, I'm going to attach a list of Linux commands with this lecture. Again, every program you install on the system will be installed as uh, will have a command prompt version so you can access that program through the command prompt. A lot of the programs that we're going to use will not even have a graphical interface so you have to use them through the terminal. Again, don't be scared of that. We're going to use it in the future. At this class, I just wanted to give you an overview of how the terminal works and how you can deal with that, uh, how you write the commands and what shows up in screen just to get you more comfortable with the structures, how you go into directories, leave directories and all that. I don't want to make this too long. As we, learn, as we learn in the future, I'll be talking about features and everything I do, I'll be explaining it. So don't worry about it. It's going to be very easy.